<laughs> Wake up. All right. So as Steve said, I'm Pamela, and I, I create the programming curriculum for Khan Academy. And I also run Girl Develop at SF, where I teach low-cost web development classes to women in San Francisco. Um, and you've just had a bunch of back-to-back -back web performance and talks, so I'm interrupting those to talk about this thing that I don't know if you know it, but I bet you a lot of you people want it, is to get more people learning programming. And when I say more people, I specifically mean the next generation of programmers. So the people that will be building fast websites 20 years from now, and that will be at Velocity 2034. And they'll be, they'll be tackling hard problems like how to get websites to load fast from our colony on the moon. Let's hope. Um, and uh, you know, this is something that's near and dear. So, the thing is that we need more students learning computer programming and computer science. And the big obvious reason for this is that there's projected to be way more computing jobs than computer science graduates in the future. And software companies are freaking out because they don't know who they're going to employ. So that's an issue. But also, for many of us and myself, we believe that computing should be just a part of general literacy. So it can help somebody talk to their techie colleagues if they understand how computers work. I'm sure all of you have non-techie colleagues, and you probably wish that they were a little more techie so that you'd all be on the more same level. And they might wish that you actually understood you know, more business talk, right? So we all kind of need to learn each other's literacy. Um, in addition, it could help people to understand the things in the news these days, like the NSC, NSA privacy invasion and net neutrality, if they understood how computers work. So even if a student decides not to major in CS, it'll still help them and the world at large if they have these basic understanding of, of computing. So we're all about numbers in performance land, and the numbers in those last graphs weren't good. So how can we increase those numbers and get them to go up, get more students learning programming and CS in K-12? All right, now to see if it offers any insights or just to check out my sweet style, let's see how I got into programming. This is me as a child, not last week. And uh, let's see, so I was raised by two computer scientists. I had five computers and I had a T1 line. You guys, you can wipe off the drool, it's cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, in case it's not obvious, I was really, really fortunate. I had privilege up the wazoo and I used the shit out of it. Rightly so. <laughs> but I was lucky, and probably a lot of you are also lucky if you're here today as programmers. But we cannot afford to rely on luck anymore because we need to get programming to more people. We have to lower the barriers. We have to enable the unlucky to get in the door. So let's look at different ways we can lower the barriers and ways that you can help on all of these, all of these ways, because I want you all to leave with little to-do lists. I'm sure you're going to have a massive to-do list, but really big one. Um, so first of all, many people do not have access to a computer at home. Or if they do have access to a computer, it's not one that's very easy to program on, like an iPad. Have you ever tried writing JavaScript on an iPad? It's really hard. I've seen people do it for six hours, though, because it's the only way they can do it, and they're, they're committed to it. But it's not easy. So they may not have a computer at home. Many classrooms don't have computers or don't have enough computers. Um, and yes, you can teach computing concepts without a computer, like with the great activities from CS Unplugged, but you can only go so far. So if you want to help, you can donate any of your old computers to you know, friends, kids, or local classrooms, or you can log on to donorschoose.org, and you can find a project that's specifically funding Lapsoft for the classroom, and you can donate to that project. Um, it's cool because you can filter by topic, location, poverty level to find something that's really near and dear to your heart. And the teacher will send you a thank you message and the students will send you really cute thank you messages. So it's, really, it's a really great thing to do. Just imagine like for every present you have in the future, just go on a donor's choose instead and use that as the present. Um, so secondly, let's say they have a computer. Now, you know, lo normally when we're programmers, we're, we send some time doing our local setup, right? So installing Node.js, making sure our Python's up to date, yada, yada. Now, you might consider that a necessary ritual to proving yourself as a programmer, like, yeah, I set up my local dev, I'm so cool. However, I consider it mostly to be a barrier. If you're new to programming, you shouldn't have to worry about setting up your local environment. That is a really easy way to get frustrated fast and give up. 
And many students, they don't even have the option to be able to set up a local dev environment. They might be on shared computers that don't have install rights. Maybe they're on Chromebacks, uh, on iPads, on phablets, whatever it is. So they don't, they don't have that option. And that's why we need more online programming environments that anyone can visit in a browser. Uh, and even including IE as a browser, and even maybe IE 8, but not IE 6, because we're over IE 6, right? We're over that. Never again. Never again. So there's quite a few online programming environments. Uh, I'm quite proud of our, our one at Khan Academy, which is real-time interactive JavaScript with processing JS, and it's a lot of fun. But there are tons more, so Scratch and Replit and Code Academy and GA Dash and all that. But I think we're only scratching the surface. I think we could have a lot more. Let's say you wanted to learn to hack hardware, but you didn't have the money to afford hardware, or you couldn't afford hardware for your own class. Wouldn't it be really cool if there was an online emulator for Arduinos and Pies and robotics, and then you could try stuff out there, and once you finally got the hardware, then you could transfer it? Or what if you wanted to learn Objective-C or Swift to make iPhone apps? I've seen, actually, one site try to do Objective-C in the browser, and wow, like trying to compile Objective-C and then stream an interactive iPhone app for trying out, it is really hard. It's a, that's a performance class all on its own. So we're, we're not quite there yet for that. And then what if you wanted to learn to program 3D games? So many of us have probably seen Brendan Eich demo running Doom in the browser and playing Doom, and that's really cool. But what about programming Doom in the browser? Now, that, that's the demo I want to see Brendan Eich do. That would be amazing. And for any of these things that you teach, you also want to have a community and a curriculum. Because it's great to have an online programming environment, but it's even better if you can be led through and shown how it works, and that you can learn from others. So perhaps some of you could start or contribute to an open source project for whatever your favorite programming language or hardware or use case is. Now, some students, if they have a computer and they have a, you know, a thing to program with, they'll just go at it on their own, and they're really dedicated and ambitious. But for a lot of students, they, they're busy, and they have school to go to, and they have work and all of this stuff, and they really need a time carved out and a place carved out for them to, to learn all of this, and a teacher to offer support. Now, unfortunately, in more than half of the 50 states, computer science does not count toward math and science graduation requirements. And 9 out of 10 high schools do not offer CS classes. So that sucks. So you can go to code.org slash promote, and you can select your state in the dropdown, and then you can sign a petition or write a letter to a local politician. Uh, and you could go more local than that. If you have a local high school or if your student's in a high school or a middle school, you could write a letter to them and say, hey, I really think that'd be great if we had a class like this, and maybe you could even teach it yourself. You know, just take like an hour out of work a week or something like that. Um, but it is going to take a while to get CS in the schools and to make CS count. But the, in the meantime, there are a ton of after-school coding clubs that are uh, popping up. So you can go to code.org slash learn slash local to find one near you. And if you don't find one, you can just start one. And it's cool if you don't like teaching, because there's online courses, like the one we have at Khan Academy, that will do the teaching for you, and you just need to provide the space and the support. And it is really, really fun to see a classroom of middle schoolers get pumped out about programming. It'll, it'll remind you of what you love about programming, because they just, oh, it's so fun. Now, you might think you'll feel good about encouraging kids, but it's not just that you'll feel good. It could actually be that it's the number one factor in getting kids to get interested in CS. So according to a recent Google research sur survey, at least for females, deciding to go into CS, the most important thing was parental encouragement, family encouragement, and peer encouragement in that order. So make sure you encourage them, but don't pressure them, okay? As somebody who came from a CS family, just don't pressure, just encourage. There's a difference. Um, now, we still want to get some of these going to a CS career, and a lot of them don't even know really what a CS degree is and what you can do with that in a career. And for females especially, they don't realize that you can have social impact with a CS degree. And we know that, in fact, yeah, we can. We can, can do really good shit for the world, right? Um, so on Khan Academy, we have this series where you can you know, meet different professionals, like physics programmers, mobile app developers, find out what they do. And then there's the Made with Code and Computing is Everywhere that shows the intersection of comp sci with different industries like basketball and dancing and Pixar. Um, now, I only had 10 minutes for this talk, so I didn't have time to go over the many, many different barriers there are and the different way that those barriers vary based on demographic. Um, but hopefully you got an idea for some of the things that you know are happening here. 
So I'm going to leave you with a simple goal. It's just to lower the barrier for one kid to learn to code, and then tell me how you did it, and then tell other people how you did it. Got it? On your to-do? All right. Thank you.